So um, today, my sharing will be basically on uh, my five power secrets. Actually, there are a lot more secrets, okay? But I believe these five, if you were to do it correctly, effectively, and you follow what I'm sharing with you and you do it correctly, these five power secrets will somehow get you the, the results that you want, okay? And I'm not telling you just for the sake of telling you. I'm not telling you just because, you know, I read it from a book. I, I searched this on internet or, you know, I, I, I learned this. No, I'm telling you this because I've gone through this journey. I failed. When I say I failed means I didn't get the results I want. I got the opposite results. Then I learned from uh, some gurus. I learned it from some, some good books that I read. But more important, I followed a few gurus. I put those action into practice. I put those knowledge, the, the things that I learned into action. And it got me the result. So these five power secrets is what I'm going to share with you. Now, guys, I don't know. Okay, Today's session may be a free session. Okay, But the value of what I'm going to share you comes from many years of tweaking, many years of blood, sweat, and tears, many years of really dive deep to get you today. So today's session is very valuable. Okay, So if you want to, to really have results in your business, I only want one thing from you. I want you to learn today's session and put it into action. How many of y'all are willing to do that for me? To put it into action, not just to listen to me. Okay, how many? Give me a two if you are ready to put all this into action. Give me a two. Give me a two. Okay, start giving me a two. If you are on the Facebook, you can press two on the Facebook as well. Okay, now the reason why I want you to give me that commitment is because the, the, the thing that makes me the happiest in doing all this webinar today is knowing that you learn from me, put things into action and got results and become successful. The last thing I want is you sit through two hours with me and just treat me like a, a, a Bon Jovi, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, Justin Bieber, you know, to sing for you. I'm not an entertainer, okay? I'm not here to entertain you guys. Don't get me wrong. I know I have a good looking face. <laughs> I'm a good looking Asian Chinese guy, but I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to make sure that at the end of this session, you guys walk away, do something with what you learn and get the results you want. Can y'all do this for me? Please, okay? Please do this for me. All right? So, before I go on to share with y'all, just, I know there are some new people that I can see on, on the screen here. Some of y'all have not really hear my story. So, I just want to go quick, about one to two minutes to tell y'all who am I so that you know that these things can be done by anybody. Then you don't need to be somebody or something or some special. Or you, you need to be the son of Bill Gates or son of the son of, or the daughter of Elon Musk. You don't need, okay? So here we go. Okay, so this is my beginning. Okay, now the guy that is talking in front of you all here today grew up in a very, very, very mm -hmm. average family. As you can see, the, the photos of my, my family, there's my father there, my two brothers. And um, I grew up in a very average family. Um, financially, we were just average, sometimes slightly below average. Um, and I'm just like any other people, I don't like to study. So you and I know if, if somebody is not like inclined to study. So my highest education level is just a high school, okay? I'm very sure like I can see Joy and... Uh, 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 Joy and... Um, Gosh, <laughs> this oxygen thing in my head. Can, uh, Joy and Shoti, Shoti, yeah, Joy and Shoti. <laughs> At least I still remember your Chinese name, okay? Joy and Shoti. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys have even higher qualification than me. Probably you have diplomas, university certificate, you know, degrees. Yeah, but this guy here is just high school graduate. I, I graduated from high school, all right? So, how did a high school graduate build a global business? Mind you, guys, think about this. When I started Enagic, it was nine years ago, 2011. People hardly even used Facebook then. 
People don't even look at Facebook. YouTube was just only start to... I still remember, guys, do you, do you, do you know that when I started, we don't even send YouTube links. I, I print, you know, I, I went to burn all these DVDs of Daniel Dimakali. I was still giving out physical DVDs. Can you imagine? And then I burned my own DVD. I, I got somebody to film me doing the demo. I burned my... We didn't even have, you know, like YouTube links and, and all this uh, Facebook funnel system. You can just press one button and you're connected to... You know, like now I'm talking to so many people like from America, from Philippines, China, uh, Cambodia, India. No. So how did a high school graduate, no experience no business contact that is super amazing, no technical knowledge in a lot of things. How did a person like that, like me, build a global business? So today I'd like to share with you all these five very powerful secrets, these five key principles that I use um, that transform my life, transform my business and took it globally, all right? So just to give you all a, a quick track record, uh, my business in the last nine years went to 25 countries. Is that, is that, a, is that a good or good? <laughs> it went to 25 countries, okay? And the beautiful part about this business going to 25 countries, some of these countries, I haven't even been there. Can you imagine? I haven't even been to, like, for example, I know of some countries that I have, I have machines there, like, for example, Panama. I, I don't even, I mean, if you tell me today, where's Panama? I, no idea. Panama, I've got machines in Africa, South Africa. You know, the place that when I was growing up, one of the best places that I love to visit, which I finally visited for my honeymoon, is an island. It's an island in Indian Ocean called the Maldives. Do you all know? Have you all heard of the Maldives? Do you know I even have a machine and a distributor in Maldives? Wow, it's like, oh. <laughs> You, you won't believe it, right? I mean, I've like one, two, three, four. I've got five machines in Maldives. Wow. It's like, so how did all this thing happen? So I'd like to share with you all some amazing secrets that I have personally learned from some top gurus in, in the world of network marketing. And I put it into action and it really worked for, for me. So guys, are you all ready to rock and roll? Are you all ready to go? Give me a thumbs up if you are, all right? Awesome. Fantastic. All right, so just to share with you all some of the, the countries that I've actually started and, and, and it de developed beyond my wildest dreams, okay? Just like what Jack Ma said about Alibaba. So I'm going to say about my Kangen business. I, I know it's going to be big, but I didn't know it's going to be that big today, okay? So my, one of my favorite, actually is my favorite country, which I consider myself half Pinoy, half Filipino, <laughs> is the Philippines, okay? I went to this country um, basically um, eight years ago. I, I remember because it's one year after I joined the business. So eight years ago, I went to the Philippines. I met a, a friend of mine. And at that point of time, he wasn't even a good friend. It was so casual. I only met him twice. One in Singapore, once in Singapore, once in Malaysia. And his name is none other than John Christopher Lim. I'm sure most of y'all know him. Okay. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. Sorry, when you have kids at home, you tend to have a free wrestling match to watch. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anyway. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Let, let's continue the match after the, the, the webinar, all right? Kids, thank you. Can I have a thumbs up? Good. <laughs> okay. Sorry for that uh, advertisement. <laughs> okay, anyway. I didn't even know he's going to build the business. So I just have to do my role, play my part to introduce. But what actually took place to rock the market is not that introduction. The introduction got me the person, which is John. Okay, that introduction. So every one of y'all know about, you know, like that demo. How many of y'all still don't know how to do demo? Okay, if you don't know, please go and learn it. Now, remember, I know some of y'all are still guilty of this, my upline, you know, the statement. 
Or oh, do demo, don't worry, my upline. I got upline. Upline, everything is upline. If you still have this in your head, please take it and throw it out of your head because that is going to be the killer of your business. It's going to kill you in your business. All right? So, the normal doing the presentation of the demonstration or the eight point, the plan, the basic plan is just an initial stage to get your team, to get your people, to get your contacts. But if you really want to build, like for example, in the Philippines, I did a rough calculation in the last nine years, my Filipino team has moved more than 30,000 machines. Can you imagine? How would you like to have a group sales of 30,000 machines in your group? Amazing, right? 30,000. You can't do it alone. You somehow need a team to do it. Okay, so I'm very grateful. I've always been very indebted, very grateful to my Filipino team, my Kangen Power Team Philippines. They're, they're super, super, super amazing, I'm telling you. Okay, so, so you need more than that if you want to, from the beginning, from the start, you want to bring it to a big volume, you need more than that, which is something I will share in my five uh, power secrets later. All right, so Philippines, amazing, amazing. Before I went there, I didn't even know that Clark, so, so those Filipinos who are watching this, you will laugh at me. I didn't even know that Clark is, is not Makati or not Manila. I landed in Clark and I thought that I'm already in Makati in Manila. I mean, how can you imagine like, like, like a village boy coming to the Philippines? Can you imagine that? You know, I don't even know how to say the word Mabuhay, you know, nothing. And yet today, more than 30,000 machines are coming out from this, 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 this group of amazing people. So I'm, I'm truly very grateful. Okay. Second, another amazing country, Cambodia. How many of y'all have actually been to this country called Cambodia? If you have, just give me a one. Give me a one on the chat button if you have been to this country called Cambodia. Okay. How many of y'all? Wow, I can see there are some people that have actually been to Cambodia. You know, I always tell people, you know, Cambodia is one country. It's beautiful, nice country. But it's one country if you have a white car, if you have a white car and your car go into the city, when it comes out, your white car will turn into a yellow car. Can you imagine a white car turning into a... Because the place is dusty. There is no tar road. The roads are all like a gravel, the mud road. That... And let me tell you this. Can you imagine that Cambodia is doing... And remember this, uh, guys without an office, which means there is no energy office in Cambodia, with a population of only 17 million people. America is 200 million. Can you imagine? Cambodia is 17 million. No office, which means every sale has to be paid in cash. And it's much higher because you have to factor in the transportation to the country. And they are doing more than 100 machines every single month. Can you imagine that? But do you know that when I first go there, nobody has heard of Kangen Water. Let me, I will share with you some stories when I share my five power secret. But can, just look at the crowd. Cambodia is going crazy today. Today, you walk into Cambodia, you go into Cambodia, you find Kangen Water banners on petrol station. You find Kangen Water banners in restaurants. You find Cambo Kangen banners in some real god forsaken place you know like like the whole place is empty like like you only see the cows and the goats all walking on the the road the the mud road and then on the left side you see a kangen water banner can you imagine that so there is some secret how from nothing from one person i went there and how this thing actually explode okay so i just want to share some 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 just to let you know my track record, so at least you know somebody that is talking to you here for the next one hour, you know who does he have some authority to tell you all this, okay? Norway. How many of y'all have actually been to this beautiful country called Norway? <laughs> I know I've got a lot of my Norway team on this call today. Norway team, if you are on this call, just write Norway for me, alright? If you are on this call, I know Helen, I saw Helen just now there, I think Ami is there right now, probably Christina. Now, can you imagine? I even have a team in Norway. Look at them. Highly motivated, highly charged, highly amazing. Every day, I'm seeing some form of 
excitement in terms of closing sales, distributor training, uh, uh, leadership training. And you know what's the best joke? I've not even stepped into Norway before. <laughs> the only nearest thing that I know about Norway is I just had some very delicious Norway salmon trout. <laughs> that's all yesterday. It is really delicious. It came air flown from Norway. But that's all I know about Norway. I've not even been there. But look at the team. You know, look at the team. Why is the team going crazy, going so excited? Bringing in sales after sales like there is no tomorrow. There is a secret. I'm going to share with you all shortly, all right? Norway. Okay, and this country, amazing. Now, I know some of y'all like from US, don't freak out. The guy that's standing next to me is not Osama Bin Laden. Don't worry. He's not the guy responsible in the terrorist attack in, 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 in US. I know September 11 just passed, but don't worry. This guy's uh, nothing related to Osama. Uh, but I tell you, amazing. Do you know I've never been to Oman? I've never even known about Oman. But of course, I, I went there a couple of years ago building the business. But a total stranger walked into my friend's Kangen office, decided to buy the machine, and within two years became a 6A. I've got hundreds and few hundreds machine sold in Oman. How did I do all this? There's a secret, guys. I want you all to really, really understand this. I'm not a superman, okay? Gary Gunn is not a superman. The only reason why I'm able to have the results that some of you all probably envy and want it is because I learn from the best in this industry. I put it into action. Maybe I just modify it a little bit towards my flavor and I put it into action. The key is massive action, guys. It's massive. That's why I told you. If today, two hours you spend with me and you get all this as just an entertainment, that is the saddest day of my life. That's not what I want. I want you all to put this into action. Go there and get the results that you should be getting. All right? Look at Oman. We have few hundred machines now sold in the whole of Oman. And my guy over there, Nasser al Sulamani, he's the first 6A uh, in Oman. And I'm so happy. Look at me uh, presenting in a mosque, in a multi-purpose hall, in a mosque in Oman. And the cultural experience that me and my partners have, wow, I tell you, it's simply amazing. It's, it, it's just like every, every person's dream come true. It, it's like I wake up every day and thank God, you know, for this great life that I'm, I'm enjoying every day, seriously. And of course, China, the world's biggest consumer market, okay? Um, with a population of something like 1.6 billion people. And um, uh, we have like, uh, we, we've just got 1682-2 um, two months ago um, in China. Um, so we have so close to easily like three, three to 4,000 machines. In China and and one of the reason why I am particularly very sentimental is because I'm a third generation Chinese okay from Ch uh, third generation Chinese in Malaysia which means my grandfather actually emigrated from China to Malaya that time in Malaysia so I'm always very sentimental when I'm able to go back and to contribute and to get now more so to give good health through Kangen water to my fellow China um, friends and family members in China, okay? And um, look, I mean, they're, they're simply amazing, you know? And of course, China, as you know, today is not like China before. Um, money is not an issue, you know? Buying power is just there. It's simply amazing, okay? And then, of course, Myanmar. Some of you have heard of it. Um, other names for it is Burma. You know, if you have heard of Burma, it's Myanmar. And then we have also, like, so many machines done there. You know, the crowd that comes in. And remember, guys, these are countries where there is no energy office. Okay? So if some of you are like, let's say my friend in America, and, and you are st still thinking like, wow, it's so difficult to do. People don't believe. Can you imagine these guys in places where there is no even an energy office? If you want to buy a machine, there is no such thing as a financing option. If it's 5000 Dollars, you pay $5,000. There's no such thing as a deposit and a, a, a monthly. No. And, and imagine the water quality in places like this. So challenging. 
you know, and yet we have people to do it. And, and therefore, I want to tell you all, this is all part of the five power secrets I will share with you. If you don't use that five power secrets and you build the global business in countries like this, you are going to face a lot of challenges. You will just wish you never even enter a country like this. But if you use the five power secrets properly, you use it to the point that I'm going to show you shortly, you will go through all this with flying colors. I tell you, it's like you are on the magic carpet. It's like you feel so excited. You wake up every morning and you thank God, you know, wow, you know, I have the greatest business in the world. All right? Okay, Dubai. You know, most of y'all like this place. I'm sure some of y'all have heard of it. Um, we have kind of like, we have more than, we have close to 100 machines. I think maybe it's 100 because we have like 5As there, 4As. We have a couple multiple 3As and all that. So uh, Dubai, and it's so interesting because when I was a young kid and every time when I looked at this Discovery Channel, I've always seen the, if you look at that hotel there, have you, have you all heard of the Burj Al Arab Hotel? It's the seven-star hotel that everybody talks about, you know. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise lives in the penthouse that is, uh, a night is like 50,000 US dollars, you know, that kind of thing, you know, the world's most expensive hotel. And when I was a young kid, I've always told myself, hey, one day when I make it in life, I'm going to dine. At least I'm going to walk in and have dinner or lunch in this restaurant, in this hotel. And you know what? Through my, through my journey with Enagic and having my global business, and especially in my Dubai team, I've already dined in the Burj Al Arab two times. Two times. It's so amazing, the experience. You know, like, wow, it's amazing, fantastic. It, it, it's something that you need. That's the beauty of having global business, right? Now, before I go on to my five power secrets, let me just, uh, once again, um, just, just run through the benefits of having a global business so that if, 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 if sometimes you think of, should I do a global business? Should I put in more time that I should? Should I invest more for my global business? Here are some facts that you want to know so that it gives you a better, clearer idea should you do it or not. Okay, number one, when you do global business, the market potential is so much bigger. Can you imagine if you are in, let's say you are in California or, or Los Angeles, you are in that small area. I mean, of course, Los Angeles and California is pretty big. Okay, but can you imagine now your, your market is the whole of America? And then from whole of America, your market now covers uh, North America and South America. The, the numbers of people grow, right? In terms of potential, in terms of number of 6As, number of 6A, 2, 2, 2, 3 and all that, it grows bigger, right? Can you imagine now from, from, from America, now you have groups in Europe. How many more numbers comes? And then from Europe, you have groups in Middle East. And then from Middle East, you have groups in Asia. I mean, can you imagine? And then now you have, you have business the whole world. Oh yeah, just now I forgot to tell you, I even have businesses in America. I have, I have groups in, in Canada. I have, groups in, um, I have groups in America. I've got, I've got groups in Texas. I've got groups in Oklahoma. I've got groups in well, Los Angeles. I mean, can you imagine? So, can you imagine today more so with the internet, with one press of the button, you can have communication, you can meet with Facebook, you can meet total strangers online from all over the world. Now is the best time to build a global business. So, your market potential starts to grow. Can you imagine if I were just doing Malaysian market? Malaysia is only 30 million people. And this 30 million is consisting of babies, children, old people, middle-aged people, right? So everybody. So maybe if you are talking of potential market, we are only just talking of a good, maybe like 5 million or lesser. That's only Malaysia. But can you imagine today, my business is not Malaysia, but my business is whole world. I am now potentially targeting 7 billion people. Can you imagine how big the market potential? So guys, seriously, today if you are not thinking whether you are in India, you are in America, you are in the Philippines, you are in Cambodia, wherever you are, 
start to think global because suddenly with the same product, the same marketing plan, everything is the same, you are the same, but your market suddenly explodes so much bigger, it's exponential. That's number one. Number two, lesser risk in a one country economy. Now, for my friend in, in America, do you remember there was one time where there is that property just, the property market just crash? You know, I don't know what you call it, but you know, people were losing their homes and, and, and people were suddenly jobless and they were living on the streets, you know. Now, can you imagine if your business is only in America and that's happening and, and I heard a lot of bad things also is happening in America now, right? So, sorry, I'm not, not trying to be negative, but you know, I, I, you can see the media with the politics and oh, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, can you imagine if your business is only in that, that market where, where this whole problem is, 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 is running up and down? So, it's going to affect your business, right? But can you imagine if you have business in America, you have business in the Philippines, you have business in China, you have business in India, you have business in the Middle East, your risk is so much spread out. Even if something, let's say a big mega earthquake rocked the entire, let's say, I, I, I mean, uh, let, I'm just giving an example. I'm not here to predict anything. Let's say the, the earthquake, let's say uh, it rocked the whole of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Canada, okay? You have so many other countries, right? So even though Tashwood, the whole of Canada go down with the earthquake, but your business is still running because you have so many places. So you have much lesser risk in a one country economy. Always remember that. Third thing, okay? Third thing, your business is not affected by certain cultural events. Now, this is very interesting because in Malaysia, Okay, I want to talk about Malaysia because I'm a Malaysian. I live in Malaysia. In Malaysia, we have three biggest race. The Malay, the Chinese, and the Indians. So these three biggest race always have their celebration, like their New Year. Like, like for Americans, probably your Christmas or your, your, or your what you call your, your Independence Day, right? Your celebration. So in Malaysia, can you imagine if we only do Malaysia business? And when you go for, when, when during that time, the whole month of that celebration month, literally your sales could be zero, you know, or it could be so low that it affects your income. And what's going to happen to your commitment to your car, for your car, for your house, for your family, right? So, like, like in Malaysia. So, this is something that is very special because when I started to have a global business, and I still remember this very clearly, okay, and I want to share this with you guys. I still remember this very clearly. On the first day of Chinese New Year, okay, it's a new year. It's a new year for all the Chinese all over the world. Not just in Malaysia, but all over the world, okay? So on the first day of Chinese New Year, no Chinese, unless you are running a restaurant business because you still want to make money from the, from the people eating, unless you are doing that or something special, a lot of Chinese don't work on the first day of Chinese New Year. So what it means, means on the first day or, or, or the subsequent days that comes, you literally have no sale. Nobody, the office won't be open. Okay, the office in your country, in Malaysia, won't be open. There won't be sales. There won't, then, and when there is no sales, don't have what? You won't have income, right? When there is no sale, no income. But can you imagine, because I've got such an amazing Filipino team, I've got the Philippine team, right? Can you imagine... Because of that, on the first day of Chinese New Year, I still remember I received a message from my handphone. I received a message from my mobile phone showing me on the first day of Chinese New Year where me and all my Chinese friends are partying like crazy. My Filipino team is doing the, their first leadership event of the year. Wow, that thought alone came to me like, wow. Isn't that amazing? While you are having a holiday, your business is still running. Now, this, my friend, is the beauty of having a global business. It transcends the cultural barrier of everything that you are having. So, while you are celebrating, your, your, other, your other team members in other countries are actually working. And the other thing that is very interesting is, especially if you have different time zones, like Malaysia and US, when we sleep, you are awake. 
when you sleep, we are awake. Can you imagine the, 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 the thought that when I'm sleeping, I still have my team members all over the world working and the next day when I wake up, the money is on my bedside. Can you, can you, can you just picture that kind of, wow. I, I, I don't know how you describe it, but it's just, wow. You know, like, it's so amazing. And that's why you need to have a global business. You know, it, it, it's amazing, okay? And you experience different culture. You know, every time I go to a new country like Oman and, and even in the Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, um, um, uh, uh, Thailand, uh, all these different countries, that very soon I'll be going to the Norway. Guys, my, my Norway team members, very soon, listen, Gary Gunn will be in Norway, okay? Just make sure the coronavirus thing is stopped. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> okay, so the experience, the culture, you know, the food, the people that you meet, the different, the different things. Okay, children, enough already. That is talking, please. Okay, thank you. Sorry, when you have four kids at home, that's what happened. You know, a lot of wrestling matches, a lot of money, Pacquiao message, uh, boxing. <laughs> All right, so referee here, okay? So anyway, you have amazing uh, cultural difference and it, it will be, you know, I, just like I told Jeffrey, why we are actually taking up scuba diving because we want to make Kangen a fun business. Can you imagine everywhere we go and we start diving in the different countries? Whoa, that's dream come true. <laughs> uh, I'll be diving in the Philippines very soon, guys. Go and get your license. Uh, Shorty, I'll be diving with you, okay? <laughs> in Davao. <laughs> All right, okay. And then, of course, larger talent pool. The last thing you want, um, the last benefit that you can get from a global business is a larger talent pool. Do you know that traditionally, people in different countries somehow have different talents, you know. As I know, like the Filipinos, they are very good in, they are very good in English speaking, you know. That, that's one of the reasons why I like to build the Philippines because I know when I go to the Philippines, I don't have issue with language. Not only that, they are very good entertainers. Every Filipinos I know can come out, they can talk, they can sing, they can play the guitar. I tell you, they are amazing performers. Okay, and then India, somehow they are very good. Of course, they can speak English. They are very good in the IT, you know. So you want to have a global business because the more talent pool that you can have in your team, that will create a very big asset for you. I'm very blessed today. I always say this. Guys, if you always have here my, my, my live video, you, you have always seen my poster, I always say this. I say, I'm the best simply because I work with the best. That's all. Gary Gunn is not a superman. I'm not a superman. I, 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 don't, I, I don't work 24 hours a day, but I am the best because I've got this great talent pool. I've got this great group of people that simply amazing. And I'm so hard. I'm so grateful. I'm so indebted to them. They're, they're my solid team, right? Okay. So guys, wow, I've spoken for one hour. So this is going to be quick, okay? This, this is going to be quick. So this is going to be half an hour and then we'll have a Q&A so that you can ask me any questions that I can support you and help you. That, that'll be great, all right? So guys, are you ready for the five power secrets on how to build a successful global business? If you are, give me a two. Give me a two. Give me a two if you are ready. Give me a two. Give me a two. Give me a two. Come on, come on, give me more two while I drink my Kangen water. Give me a two, give me a two, give me more two. The more tools that you give me, the more excited I get, okay? Awesome. All right. <coughs> too much water. Okay, let's rock, okay? So the first power secret that I like to share is think long term. <coughs> you guys are feel free, feel free to take a snapshot if you want, but please respect my respect my intellectual property. Please don't post this on Facebook or any social media. It's just for your visual, 
you may want to share it with your team, just don't put it on social media. Thank you. I just appreciate you on that. Now, what I mean by think long term, you see, building a global business, you see a lot of people somehow have this very funny, weird mindset that, oh, I just go to this country, I, I look for one guy, and then I teach him everything, I come back, he will do everything and he will be the next Gary Gunn. Yes, sometimes you can find a Gary Gunn. But not everybody is a Gary Gunn. <laughs> okay, so what I'm trying to say is, even if he is a Gary Gunn, you need to support that person. So let me share with you an example of how I built, let's say a country called the Philippines. Okay, some of my people have known me from way back that I came to the Philippines. I went to the Philippines the first six months in the the first six months to one year uh, six months that I was building the Philippine market uh, I spent more time in the Philippines than I spent more time in Malaysia do you all know that it simply means uh, I need to keep going back why because I need to keep the fire burning so the long-term thinking is you must be willing to to do it okay don't expect to have a plant, uh, take a seed, put it in the ground, water one day, put some fertilizer and expect suddenly the, the tree will grow and become a mighty forest. It doesn't work that way. It needs you to be there over and over again. Keep on doing training. Keep on doing you know, uh, the, the mindset, the training, the, the duplication. You have, to, you have to put yourself, at least to me, if you ask me the, 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 the way I look at it, at least commit yourself if you want to build a strong global business at least three years minimum three five or ten years but minimum commit to a three years that means in these three years you must tell yourself no matter how many doors are slammed in front of me i am just going to keep doing it i'm just going out there and do it you know no matter if my new leaders come in they become the senior leaders and the senior leaders leave i am still going to do it if my new leaders come in, my old leaders go, I am still going to do it. Whatever it is, I'm going to do it. If not, okay, guys, listen. Huh? Listen very carefully. If you are not willing to think of it long term, I strongly suggest you don't do it. Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to spend time away from your family or if, even if you are doing this webinar, you are already sacrificing certain amount of your time to plant the seed. And if you are not willing to water the seed for the next three, three years at least, why are you doing this? Waste your time. Might as well go and watch Netflix with your family. Spend more time with your children better. But if you want to have a fulfilling global business, commit to yourself and say, I am going to do it long term. Okay? Now, it's just like giving birth, right? I'm very sure there are a lot of mothers here probably. You know, you give birth, you, you don't think of it as, oh, I, 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 I born my child, I deliver my child, that's it, okay, my job is done. No, right? You know for a fact that for the next maybe 20 years until they become independent, you are going to take care of them. That's how you are going to see your energetic Kangen business or whatever network marketing you are in. You have to look at it long term. Commit to it. Tell yourself, it must be long-term. And don't forget, okay? Now, when I show you those photos, okay, of all the, the roses in my business, of all the sunshine in my business, don't have that wrong idea and think it's always sunshine and roses. I have met with so many challenges that you guys don't even know. I, I don't tell you guys. But that doesn't mean there is no challenges. So many, there are new people that even went to Dash 2 and they left. They went to even Dash 3 and they left. Leaders that are strong, so close with me and they left and they leave. Normal. So you want to be, you want to have the expectation that yes, there will be some people who drop out. You're probably your closest leader may leave you. It's normal. You must be willing to go all out and do it no matter what. Okay, you have to think long term. Okay, you must look at it like you are building a country. Can you imagine what would you do when you are building your country? Does it mean that just because there are some small problems, you just close the door and leave and just abandon? 
or, or you're building your family. Does that mean that just because you have some argument with your spouse or with your children, you just leave the family? You just say, it's game over, it's over, it's gone? No, right? So just like that, when you build your energetic business, you must tell yourself this, I am going to build long-term. The long-term thinking must be there. If you are not willing to put in at least three years, if you ask yourself, if you talk to your spouse, you talk to your partners, if you are not willing to at least put in three years of your effort, time, money into building your, your business globally, don't do it. Because this business will only grow when there is time involved. All right? Now, some of y'all have heard the story of my upline, okay, Samsia. Today, India has become one of the fastest growing uh, country in Enagic. But you must understand, how long did Samsia actually base himself in India? How many cities in India he was traveling nonstop, even in the early days when there is no result? Money was just going out, no income coming in. It was just spending and spending and spending with literally no hope of any success and yet he persevered on and i think within like i don't know he says a few months or a year suddenly a, a light came and then suddenly one or two people started to move and move and move and today you look at india they are doing something like four to five thousand machines a month can you imagine four to five thousand machines a month and that is because of that long-term thinking what will happen? Can you imagine what will happen if Samsia decided after just one month to pack his bags and leave, come back to Malaysia? Today, there won't be a India, right? So the same with what I did for Philippines, the same with what I did for uh, Cambodia, the same with what we did for Oman and all these countries. It takes time, okay? It takes time. And guys, remember this, huh? okay? This may be a wake-up call for a lot of y'all. Now, can I ask you a question? When you starting to plant the seed into the ground, let's say this seed is going to be an oak tree. When you start to plant the seed, do you immediately see any tree coming out? Do you see any fruits coming out? If you, if you say yes, give me a one. If you say no, give me a two. I want to see. How many of y'all think that when you plant something, it, the, the, the tree just shoot up the next day? Give me a one. And if you think that it doesn't come, it will only come after many, many months or years after that. Give me a two. Give me a two. Okay, I can see it. Okay, even on Facebook, people are already giving me a lot of two. A lot of tools, right? Now, so what I'm trying to tell you, guys, when you go to a new country or you go to a new market and you are starting to build your new business, whether it's Kangen or whatever networking business you are in, Tell yourself this, if the tree suddenly grows, that means you suddenly have a, let's say a Gary Gun, let's say a, a Cynthia Briganti or, or somebody special. It is sometimes, sometimes you are lucky, okay? I, I, I won't kind of say luck, maybe you are, you are blessed. La. <laughs> maybe you are blessed. God, God loves you so much, He just gives you a, a superstar, okay? But most of the time, you and I know, it takes time. So tell yourself this, if nothing happened in the beginning, it is normal. Don't, don't be so hard to, on yourself and say that, you know, oh, maybe I'm lousy or maybe I'm no good. I, I, I'm not as good as Gary. I, I don't have a good looking face. Like, no, it has nothing to do with that. It is natural. Just like the seed in the ground, for it to grow, it takes time. So it will take a lot of time. Sometimes you will have a lot of down. Sometimes you have to meet a lot of failures. Sometimes you have to go through a lot of challenges. But remember, when it starts to grow, when you have the right leaders to explode the market, you want to stop that tree from growing, it is, not, it is not even possible. It will keep growing and growing and growing and growing. I give you a very simple illustration. I give you a very simple example. Okay? Since I can see Joy on the screen in front of me. Okay? So, I want to ask, let, let me just, uh, let, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me just unmute Joy. Okay, let me just unmute Joy. Okay, just, just a role play, okay? Okay, let me just uh, unmute, okay. Joy, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. 
Yeah, hi Joy. Sorry, Clarence. I wanted to call your Clarence, but I don't know why the name just never hit come into my head. So I call you by your Chinese name, Shoti. Okay, anyway. So yeah, Joy and Clarence, amazing, right? So Joy, I want to ask you one question. Okay. Uh, you and Clarence, I want to ask both of y'all one question. Let's say touch wood, uh, it's, it's just an example, it's not real, okay? I, touch wood is not real, it's just an example. Let's say for whatever reason, Gary, me here, I decided I don't want to do Kangen anymore. I, I want to maybe devote myself to travel the whole world in the next one year. I don't want to do Kangen anymore. Let's just say. Can I ask y'all a question? Would y'all still be doing this business? Yes. Clarence? Yes. That yes, right? So, yes. so it proves the point. You see, it proves the point. The business has grown so big, it is not even depending on me anymore. Even if I decided to not do the business, I go for holiday, or, or I for whatever reason I said no, uh, or maybe 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 due to some reasons I'm not I'm not here anymore. <laughs> Let's say okay, whatever. Okay. But Joy, would you all still be doing the business? Of course. Yes. Of course. So, yes. So this is what I'm saying. When you build the thing strong enough and your team, your leaders, your people are all independent, they are self-driven, they are motivated, it has gone even be beyond you. It has nothing to do with you anymore. It has nothing yes. to do with me anymore. Yes. That's the business of business. But remember, you must have a long-term thinking. Because only when you build the thing, when the, when the oak tree from that seed, it became an oak tree, when it grows into a forest, it is only from that level that it will run without you. But before that, these things all is not possible. Because when the, 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 the tree is not even coming out, anything that is happened to the seed, it will die. So remember, always, always focus long term. Thank you, Joy. And thank you to, to Clarence. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that's point number one. Power secret number two. Okay, are y'all ready, guys? Are y'all ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Lao uh, Kong, if you're ready, give me a thumbs up. Yes. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Now, number two. Okay. This is something... I notice a lot of people don't do, but it's a very, very powerful tool. You see, I notice a lot of people when they go to, when they go to a new country or a, they build a global business, they go to a new country, they, they don't sell a vision. So what do they do? They probably do the, the, the usual thing, the demo. Now, again, guys, I'm not saying don't do demo. You need to do the demo. But on top of the demo, on top of the marketing plan, the eight points plan, you need to sell your vision. Why? Because you want to build a kingdom. You want to build an empire. You want to build, you literally want to build a country. You are like, you are like George Washington trying to create the whole America. Don't you think you need to Paint the picture for that new people. The guy is not even a 1A, probably haven't sold a machine. The guy is not even a 6A. He doesn't know anything. Don't you think you need to show him that big picture so that he gets so excited when you leave the country? Because you are going to probably, not many of y'all can actually stay there for one year, right? You, you probably like me, I will usually go to that country maybe three days, four days, five days. Then I will have to come back. When you come back, the vision is going to stay with them. That's why it's so important to sell your vision. If you don't do this and you just do a normal, just, you know, it's a product thing or a business thing. You show the plan, a product, a plan, a product. What is going to give them that, that extra protection when there are cold water thrown on them, when there are rejections thrown on them, when there are doors slammed on them? What is it? It is this vision that you need to sell. Okay, so why? Because vision, okay, you may want to write this down if you have a pen and paper. Vision equals to power. Do you know when you have a vision? You see, I still remember Malaysia. 
Okay, Malaysia in the early 80s, when our amazing Prime Minister, Dr. Mahathir, when he talks about Vision 2020, do you know before him, Malaysia was so backwards? We have nothing. We were just like a village, you know, poverty everywhere, you know, just like a village. But the moment he said that Vision 2020, okay, he said Vision 20, which is this year, he said the, the vision from 80, 20 years ago, he said 20 years vision. Today, we have the Twin Towers. Today, we have the train system. Today, we have the, the F1 circuit. We have the you know, so many great things. Just like him building Malaysia, you building your network marketing business, you need to set the vision for your people. So, vision equals to power, equals to direction, and equals to success. Because you must understand, your people are new. They don't even know what is Kangen. They don't even know about your business. They don't even know about Mr. Oshiro or whatever. The excitement is in you. Your role is to transfer your excitement to your people through your vision. Okay, through your vision. So I want to share with you all this vision, uh, this, this, this example of what I did that became very successful in a country called Cambodia. Okay. Now, how I sold my vision, let me share with you this, okay? Now, this was easily five years ago, 2015. My, my, one of my first time going to Cambodia. That time, nothing. Today, we have close to, I think easily Cambodia, today we have close to three to 5,000 machines already sold in the whole of Cambodia, okay? But during that time, nothing, okay? So I still remember I did a seminar, a, a leadership seminar and, 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 and people like Clarence and Joy, you know, when I talk, I, I cannot be talking like, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, this, I, I cannot talk like this. When I talk, I have to talk like as if I'm in a rock concert, you know, like, wow, you know, and I talk like that. Huh? Can you imagine? I talk like that from 10 a.m. in the morning until 11 p.m. at night, one man show, me alone. No, nobody to stand in, me alone. Okay, and I still remember I was talking in a house, in a distributor's house. And in that leader, in that so-called seminar, in that training, in that little training, there were only 10 people. 10 people in that house. I talked from 10 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. Most of the time, in those training, I was selling my vision. You know, people were thinking that Gary is crazy. You know why? That time, Cambodia, nobody knows about Kanga, no machine, nothing, nothing. You know what I was talking? I was talking things like this, you know. You know, Kangan is going to be the household name in Cambodia. Every corner will know Kangan. The Kangan will be here, Kangan will be there. And you guys, because everything is, you guys will be right on top of the gold mountain. You guys will see the vision. And everybody join will be under your. And then even you go to this place where have Kangan, that Kangan, Kangan, but nothing. At that point of time, there is nothing. And those people are scratching their head, you know. Those people are scratching their head. Why is this crazy guy jumping up and down, shouting, you know, at the top of his lungs, you know, wow, 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 you know, like. Those guys are like, yeah, this guy has gone nuts, gone cuckoo, right? But you know what? Fast forward five years now, you look at the Facebook. You, you don't trust me. You just look at Facebook today. Every nook and corner in Cambodia, whether it's down south, up north, western, eastern, everywhere you see Kangen. And we have more than 5,000 machines sold. Suddenly, even doctors want to join us. Even dentists wants to join us. Even business, multi-billionaire business wants to join us. Everybody wants to join us. Why? Because at first it was my vision. And I was talking, I, I personally, guys, seriously, I personally believe it will come true. Why? Because I know it's not me. Okay? I know when I talked about all this, it has something to do with the law of attraction. And if you believe in God, it is always God's power. So if God is meant to execute the final plan, I know I'm in good hands. So I, I have no issue of the thing. It is only a matter of time, whether it's going to be sooner or later, but I know it will work. So I'm just talking. But today, that vision of, wow, 
Cambodia is going to be number one. Cambodia is the best. Cambodia is in the Kangen number one. Number one Kangen. We are going to create history. All this talk is no more from me. No more. Why? Because I've already sold my vision to all the leaders. Now the leaders in Cambodia talk even louder than me. They are even more convicted than me. They are even more stronger than me. That's why I'm telling you, you need to sell your vision when you are building a global market. Not just only the demo. The demo is important. The eight point is important. But you need to sell them like as if you are building a mega empire in that new country. Because you don't just want to sell machine, right? You want a team. You want to be like, you know, you want to be like, I don't know, give me some names. You want to be like King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table, that kind of thing. You want to have teams that, that are so fearless, you know. Everybody talk about your team, like, like people today, they talk about Kangen Power Team, KPT, wow, you know. Everybody says, wow, that's an amazing team. I want to be part of that team. You want to be like that. So you need to do this one extra thing. On top of the demo, the product knowledge, the, the business plan, the opportunity, good. That's really good. But on top of that, you want to add these power tips, number two, which is your vision. And you give them the direction because remember, again, vision equals to power, equals to direction, and equals to success. Okay? Always remember that. Okay? And, and remember, okay? Last, to, to add on this point, remember, some people in the beginning may not be very enthusiastic with your vision. You know why? Because it is your vision, not their vision. But when you keep telling them about this vision long enough, when that vision becomes their vision, they will believe it. But initially, it is the vision of yours. So at first, when I, I told you that day, right, I was shouting up and down, they don't believe. Even at the end, they don't believe. But something moved them. Something moved them. So the couple, out of the 10 people, that couple came out and did something and today from that couple they have sold more than 5,000 machines in small little Cambodia alone okay so I like to make a very quick quote on the power of this vision okay and I, I, I really love this quote I, I, I heard of this quote from that movie The Million Dollar Baby how many of y'all watched that movie if you have never watched this movie I strongly encourage you go and watch it's, it's, it, the, the act, actor is uh, Clint Eastwood there's a Morgan Freeman and that girl. I don't know what's that girl's name. That that is you. You remember Million Dollar Baby? That girl. What's her What's her name? Okay. Anyway, it, it is a very popular actress. <laughs> you just find it. But go and go and look for that movie. It, it's about yeah boxing. Joy. Yeah, I think you watched that show. It's about that boxing. Okay. So in that show, there's this word about the vision. He says, now, vision. When you vision is the ability, okay. Vi, the, when you have, uh, it, it's, it's not exactly like this, but it's somewhere around there. The vision gives you the power to give up everything you have to pursue a vision that only you can see. In other words, you are even willing to give up everything in your life for something that no other people can see except for you. And that's the power of vision. So when you start in a new country, you want to sell that vision because you saw that and you need to really visualize, you know, okay, I give you another trick. Okay, I give you another trick. This is another thing that I do very, very effectively. And I tell you, it works all the time. You do it with your team. Every time we go to a big event, like, like you know, the, a big crowd, even if all the people are not belong to you, I will always go to the leaders and I will tell them, hey, Romy, I said, Romy, Romy, and I know Romy will agree with me. Okay, Romy, if you are on this call, if you agree with me, you just put the agree button on the chat group there, right? I always tell Romy, I said, Romy, can you imagine one day all these people belongs to your team? Can you imagine you are talking on the stage and all these people are your people? Do you remember me saying that, Romy? If you do, give me a one or, or put a yes there. You know, th these are some of the things that I know uh, I've learned from uh, a lot of very successful guru and, and, and I, I, I tweak it in a very different way. I did it and it has caused a very amazing global business for me. All right. So that's.
Power secret number two. Power secret number three. Now, your role when you are building global, okay, and I know a lot of people are really, really guilty of this. Okay, now remember, and again, I want you all to know this. Now, network marketing is a business development program these guys in a business outfit. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, you all need to keep improving yourself. Close the door then, you don't. The reason why I say this is very simple. A lot of people may tell me, Gary, I may not be a good trainer. Gary, I'm not a good influencer. Gary, I'm not a good leader. Fair. I agree with that. I have no issue with that. But everybody can at least learn to be a great trainer. Learn to be a good influencer and learn to be a good leader. What I'm trying to say is... What I'm trying to say is... You need to be this. You know why? Because based on my many years of experience, and also the feedback from my uh, people, my leaders, my members who try to build overseas and then they come back and they tell me that, you know, things don't work out, you know, the results are not what they want. It's because I noticed that they go to that country and become a salesman for the new people. How many of y'all are guilty of this thing? You go to the new place and be, end up becoming a salesperson or becoming an installer or becoming a, a problem solver. You, you end up becoming, like, as I mentioned just now, a lot, of, a lot of the new people will just say, ah, don't worry, I got upline. Every time you go to that country, they take you one house by one house, you end up becoming a salesperson for them. You becoming a demonstrator. You becoming a product specialist for them. My friend, listen, uh, that is not the right way to build your network marketing business. Just before today's session, I had tea time just after the diving session with Jeffrey. And I told him that, I said, can you imagine your role is to sell a McDonald franchise? Now, you sold the McDonald franchise to somebody, let's say Richard in Philippines. And then when you go there and he expects you to run the franchise, is that, does that make sense? Your role, if ever you go there, is to make sure that he knows how to run his franchise. So your role is not go to the country to help them to do the demo. It's not go to help them to fix the machine. It's not go there to help them to, 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 you know, to do deep cleaning. You know, I know of people actually fly all the way to another country just to do deep cleaning. Oh my God, I'm just wondering what is going on, you know. And then they say the business is not growing. Of course, you know why? Because your people are not looking at you as a trainer influencer and a leader. Now, my, my leaders that are on this call knows very well. My Kangen Power Team people knows very well. You know very well that when Gary Gunn goes to a place, how many times you see Gary Gunn installing machine? You, you know, I don't. You, oh, guys, do you think I don't know how to install a Kangen machine? I'm damn good at it, okay? <laughs> it's just that I don't do it, okay? Because if I were to do that, then I cannot build a global business. And that's what I know. Because many years ago, I did that and I, I failed. I, I got into problem and every time I come back, my business stopped. Because I, I realized that I became a salesman for my global business. It's no, not right. The most is you need to go and do training. So you need to be very clear to your people when you start, start a global business. You need to be very clear to your people that this is your business. This is not my business. This business that you took up, your Kangen business, is your business. So your business, you better run the business. Okay, you don't know how to do it, never mind. I come, I show you. But I show you, you do it. It's not I come and I do it, no. Remember, huh? not I come, I do it, no. I come, I show you how to do, but you do it. So you are a trainer. And then you are influencer. So you want to, especially today, where you have social media, 
I know not every one of y'all is like, you know, like, like, like me, you know, like to easily on the YouTube, but you have to. Not, it, it, it's just like if you want to be a president Duterte, let's say my friends in the Philippines, you want to be a president Duterte, and then you say, no, uh, I, I'm very shy, I cannot do public speaking. It cannot. I'm, I'm sorry, there's no other way. You need to somehow break through, do it. Okay, but you know what? You don't have to be the best. You, you don't need to be like, wow, like Coco Martin or Bia Alonso. You don't need. You, you can just be natural. But you know what? When you start doing one time, two times, three times, five times, ten times, you will be good. You will be good at it. And then, then can you imagine you have your own YouTube channel? You have your own Facebook following? These are all influencers that you need to do. Why? Because remember, remember, you are not going to that country to sell machines. Remember this, guys. If you have a paper, write this down. Very important. You are not going to the country to sell machine. If you still think that you want to go and sell a product, you are in the wrong business. The reason why I am able to have this global business that is still running with or without me is because my entire focus has been going there to build a team. So if I don't make it to build a team, I'm not even bothered to sell product because my role is not to sell product. My role is building a team. When I leave that country, I know my business is still ongoing. That is the whole idea of us building the Kangen business. If you are in Kangen, that's the whole idea of building Kangen. It's to build a team that builds the business. It's not, it's not about going there to sell the machine. It's not about going there to do the best demo. No. You rather, you rather your people do a lousy demo and they do it rather than you. Okay? So it's very important. And then your, because, because you are a trainer, you see, do you realize that when you train, okay, I'll ask you a question. When you train somebody, who is the leader? The trainer or the listener? It's very obvious it's the trainer, right? So you want to be the leader, you need to be the trainer. But imagine if you go there and you are the one that's fixing the machine. You are the one that is doing the work. Who is the leader? It's not you. It's your people. You are the follower. That's why your people don't respect you. Your people don't respect you. How are you going to build a global team? Then your people calling you, hey, when are you coming? I need to fix three machine. Come, fix the machine. Like they treat you like a domestic helper, you know. I mean, that's not the way to build a business, right? So you want people to look up at you. You want people to look up at you, you need to be like a trainer, like a teacher, you know. You, you, when you are a student, you look up to your teacher, right? It's, it's not whether your teacher is younger than you or older than you. But because at least your teacher knows more than you, he has the authority. You want to carry yourself that way, okay? And your people respect you because you are a trainer. You do things like your influencer. You are able to do a video. L last time maybe, oh, those days, uh, uh, Clarence cannot even do a YouTube video. Today, wow, Clarence has a YouTube channel with five, ten videos. They respect you. They will talk about you. They will send the videos links. You know, they will do so many things. They will appreciate you. That is what you need to be. Because in order for, remember guys, in order for your business to continue without you, your people must be strong, not you. Again, your people must be strong, not you. Why I said not you? Very simple. You are not going to be in that country forever. You are going to come back. If you come back and your people are not strong and you don't build them to be strong, what's going to happen to your business? Game over. It's going to be finished. That's why a lot of people, they go, something happened. Got one or two sales. They come back, zero. Then they go again, one or two sales. Come back, zero. This is it. Because you are not training, you are not influencing, you are not le leading them. You need to build that. You need to build a team. Okay? You need all this. And... And then you need to do the things that is different. Now, how many of y'all actually uh, attended my session that I interviewed Mr. and Mrs. Oshiro? Uh, give me, put a me, put a me in the chat button. Those of y'all who actually attended my session, 
Mr. and Mrs. Sojo. Wow, I can see so many. Uh. On the Facebook, you can also give me a me. You know, if if you if you have also attended my session with Mr. and Mrs. Oshiro. Now, you know why? Why is Gary Gunn doing that? Actually, I don't need to do that, right? I mean, I see Mr. and Mrs. Oshiro very often. You know? But I have to do things that's different. Why? I want people to respect, talk about me. I want people to, to look at me as, wow, do you know just with that one event I did, my YouTube my YouTube subscriber jumped like 500%. My YouTube views jumped 1,000%. My, my number of friends on Facebook, like everybody is adding me, adding me, adding me, adding me. You want all this. So you need to do different things. If, if you are just going there to do the menial thing, I, I'm not saying it's not, it's not good to support your people. I'm not saying that. Of course, once a while, if you need to just do a demo for your people, it's okay. But... Focus on the big picture. Focus on, on building the empire, building the team, building the group, building that team that is going to give you a thousand, ten thousand machines a month. You know, my goal, my goal is by end of 2022, which is two years from now, I'm going to have 10,000 machine sales every month coming to me passively. So in order to do that, it, has, it cannot be anything about me. It's no more about me. It's all about my team. How can I leverage my team to get me the 10,000 machines a month in, by end of 2022? That's my goal. Seriously. So all I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing Mr. Oshiro. I'm getting new leads. In, I'm doing so many things. I'm doing so many very different things from what other people are doing is because you need to be a trainer, influencer, and a leader. And you don't want to be doing all the menial, menial things that it becomes a curse to your people. Remember, a lot of people, huh? now, I'm going to spend just one minute to share this. I know there are a lot of parents here. You know, there's a saying, when you spoil the rod, you spoil the child. You know, oh, no. When you, there, there's a saying, when you save the rod, you spoil the child. Something like that. So when you spoil your child, let's say you, you, you keep doing so many things for your child in the early days and you don't get them to be independent, you are not hard on them. What happens when they grow up? They become unindependent. They, they become rebellious. Whatever, whatever you know. You, you know the whole story, right? Your child in real life is like your child in your energetic, your kangen or your networking business. It's the same. Your people are like that. When at the beginning, you, you are hard on them, you train them, you make them so fearless, so tough, they can do, they are so independent you will see the results benefiting you over and over and over again very in the very near future. But in the beginning, it will be very tough because sometimes you will have a lot of challenges. Sometimes you may even feel bad. Like I, I told Jeffrey just now, I said, there are times where my people call me and I turn them down. I just say, no, I'm not going to do it. I will be there, but I'm not going to do it. You do it. And they say, why are you doing it? I said, no. I'd rather be cruel to you now and you become successful, then I'm very relaxed. You don't succeed, I don't succeed. And then what's the point? Then at the end of the day, you waste your time, I waste my time. No. I told myself, this is it. This is the system. You do it this way. And look at my team today. I'm so proud. I'm so happy. Without me, I've, I've not even been to Norway. And every single day, I'm seeing success coming from Norway over and over. And of course, all the other countries as well. It's amazing, I'm telling you, okay? So, remember, focus on becoming a trainer, influencer, and leader. This is power tip number three, okay? Now, power tip number four, okay? Lead with a system. Now, I've always tell people that network marketing is a very different animal. Network marketing, network marketing, and I again want to mention if those of y'all today on this call and you are in the Energic Kangen business, you are in a network marketing business. I don't care what is your impression of a network. Some people say, no, Gary, we are not networking because networking is binary, is level. No, 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 no. Network marketing simply means your business is run by a network of distributors. That is the meaning of network marketing. It's not about binary or, or because we are eight points, so we are different. Hey, 
Guys, and what is so wrong about doing network marketing is not a crime. It's not a sin, okay? It's not a bad thing. The only thing that people don't like saying it is because they think that network marketing is bad. But hello, there are good network marketing companies around and Enagic is one of them. How many of y'all agree that Enagic is a good network marketing? Give me a one. Give me a one if y'all agree that Enagic is a good network marketing company. All right, give me a one. Okay, so remember, network marketing is a different breed because, let me tell you this. Now, I want to really stress this because I realize a lot of people are still getting into problem with this concept, this ideology. Now, network marketing must be available for everybody to do. In the, what I mean by saying this is if you have a pen means it must be, you want to write this down. Your Kangen business must be so simple that everybody can do it. In other words, your system must be so simple that everybody can do it. If your system needs to be only done by people who have knowledge in medical, in, 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 in certain technicalities, so that they can succeed, then you are failed, it's failed, it's wrong, cannot, it cannot move already. And that's why a lot of people struggle in this. They want to know the science of Kangen water. They want to know the detail, like the, the, the micronutrients, the millimeter or whatever. I don't know what you call it. They want to know like as if they want to know Kangen water like it's a medical school. It's wrong. Look at my interview with Mr. Oshiro last Tuesday. What did he say? He, first, he took out this bottle. Of course, it's not like this, but he took out the bottle. Then he drank this. Okay, children. Lee, Lee, Lee. Where's mommy? Please, can you all go in, children? Thank you. Ah. But anyway, it's good, huh? Good daddy, huh? Can still keep the balance, huh? <laughs> you remember what Mr. Oshiro said about the Kangen water? He says, and I asked him, why is it different? He said, it's different. Why is it different? It's just different. Why is it different? It's just different. Hey, guys, even our founder is making Kangen water so simple. So when I say lead with a system, I simply mean that you need to have a very simple basic system. For example, the demo is a system. If you think about this, the demo is actually a system. The eight point presentation. And please guys, don't go and, don't go and try to reinvent your own eight point plan. I know there are a lot of people, you know, they show the eight point plan, I can't even understand. When your upline show you the eight point plan, you follow to the dot. I know that. Why? Because when I did my eight point plan, it was the exact eight point plan that Daniel Dimakali did it. I never even changed. I even, I even shared the example exactly what, like what Daniel Dimakali said. And I still remember this. Okay, and I still remember this. One of the biggest success that I have is in the Philippines. And I remembered in the early days when people asked John, okay, John Lim, they asked him, hey, John, how did you become so successful? How did you build such a big business in the Philippines? And I remember John said this. I remember very clearly John said this. I just copied Gary Gunn. He said this. Now, now I'm not a superstar, but because I did my eight-point plan, it worked. And I copied from Daniel Dimakali. So I copied from Daniel, it worked. So John copied from me and it worked. And today we did more than 50,000 machines in the Philippines. So what I'm trying to say is don't make it complicated. Sometimes I, I look at some people's demo, you know, wow, they add in those things uh, until the guy is confused. He don't even know what, what is it all about. Or, or if you show the eight point plan and you do it your way, you know, it's so confusing. Just do it like how it is done. Remember, McDonald's is not the best tasting burger in the world, but they are the biggest burger franchise because of the system. So I want you all to remember, it is not you that is building the business, it is the system. So I want you all to see this. Huh? If you are the one that is building the, the business 
and you are the, 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 the determining factor whether the business is on or not, that's the reason why when you leave the country, zero. Zero business because you are leading it. But when you have a system that leads it, you can leave the country, the business is still going because it's nothing to do with you. It's not you. That's why I always tell people, Gary Gunn is not Superman. I'm not super. Okay, maybe I can talk better than a lot of people, but I'm running with a system. And the more simple the system, the more easier people are going to learn. Now, remember guys, I, why I'm able to share with you this is because of my experience in building so many different, different countries, you know. I don't know how many people have that opportunity like me to build. You know, I can from Malaysia go to Thailand, Thailand go to Philippines, Philippines go to Cambodia, Cambodia go to Vietnam, Vietnam go to uh, China, and then China back to Malaysia. Now, can you imagine all these different countries have different languages, different culture. So can you imagine if you are not leading by a simple system, how are these people going to build your business? Now, even if you talk English, if you talk English and you are having so many scientific jargons in it, even the English speaking cannot understand you. How about people who don't speak English? How are they going to understand you? And that's the reason why a lot of people make this biggest mistake of trying to complicate the business and thinking that they are building the business. It is not them. It is the system. So you need to have a system. If you don't, go and check with your upline. If you cannot find from your upline, go to your up, 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 up line and, and get the system from them. Okay? But if you are in Kangen Power Team, you are very blessed because in Kangen Power Team, we have already got all the system in place. That's why we are doing all our Kangen Power Team Leadership Seminar. That's where we impart the system to you all. Okay? But you need to have this system because without this system, you are the determining factor. And if you are the determining factor, when you go back to your home country, that's where the business stops. That is something you need to really, really remember. Okay? Now, okay. And, and why the system? Okay, of course, you must make sure that your system works. Huh? Of course, if your system is not working, again, there will be a problem. Because, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the, if the system is not proven, it will not give you the result you want. So do you want a system that not gives you the result or you want a proven system? So make sure you are duplicating the proven system. If you are not duplicating the proven system, you will have a problem. Okay? So make sure your, your system is proven. Third thing, last before I go to my last power tip number five, the reason you need to lead with your system is because it will become consistent. Now, remember, human beings, no matter how con how effective you are, you will have your high days, you will have your low days. So if your business is dependent on you, sometimes you may be high, sometimes you may be low. But when your system is dependent on your, when your business is dependent on your system, then it will become consistent because everything is follow the system. Demo, everybody can do the demo. So you must make sure all your people must be able to do lah. Anybody that cannot do, you must make sure that they perfect the system. Now, do you realize that it is only probably network marketing that people have issues with this system thing? Now, if you were to go to the insurance industry, there is no issue because in the insurance industry, there are so many training to teach on the system. Okay? And so the same with, let's say, the property or whatever, or even the franchise business. Can you imagine if today you were to buy a McDonald's franchise. You cannot simply say, I want to do it my way. Oh, no, I think uh, the ice cream the, the, don't taste nice for the Malaysian or the Asian market. No way. You have to follow their way of doing because their way has been proven successful. So you want to follow their system. So it's very important you lead with the system. All right, guys? And finally, last but not least, be a team player. The power secret number five. Be a team player. Now, 
sometimes when sometimes when we get too successful, we tend to have a ego problem, which is normal. We are all human beings. I understand that. Okay. How many of you all are guilty in this? <laughs> you know, when you become successful, sometimes you know you you tend to have some ego problem. You tend to think that you know, oh, I know more than a lot of people. You know, I I do have that sometimes. I I'm also guilty, but. It is very important if you want to build a big global business, you need to be a team player. So sometimes, even myself, um, in the early days, I want to micromanage a lot of things because I always feel that I'm good, right? I always feel that I'm great. I'm like, wow, I'm the best or something. But I realized after that that it is not me. It is a team. I always say this. If you want to conquer the world, you alone cannot do it. But with a team, you can easily conquer the world. Of course, I'm not saying conquer like the Hitler or the you know the the that kind of conquer lah. I conquer it means you are able to you know to actually get the market in you know. So the market is so big, it cannot be the only person running the thing. So through the years, I realized that. The lesser and and I always like to share this, ah, guys. If you have paper, I want you to write this down. You know, in the in 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 the in the career in the working environment or even in the traditional business, the word redundancy, okay, redundancy, redundant, is a bad word, because if you are working for people and your job is redundant, means they don't need you anymore and you will be fired. <laughs> You know, like Donald Trump said, you are fired, right? Because why? They don't need you. Your job is redundant. Why should I continue to pay you when I don't need you anymore, right? So, in the traditional business or or in the job market, that is true. But listen to me very carefully. All right, in network marketing, when you become redundant, that's where you become successful. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Some people, I'm not sure. Some people is like, Gary has gone crazy or probably you are, you are maybe thinking crazy. Now, you re really think about this, okay? You really think about this. Isn't, isn't the goal of being in a network marketing is to have a big business empire and you come to a point that you don't even need to really do much and yet, Every single day and month, you have income coming to you. Isn't that the dream of every network marketer in the world? That's the dream, right? Yeah, that's what. So, so, but when I say being redundant, I don't simply mean like you you are no more wanted. You know, I don't want you anymore. It's not that. But the the meaning of redundancy in in the context of network marketing means. Without you being an active player in the business, and yet you have sales coming in, and therefore income still coming into your pocket, that is the meaning of redundancy in in this context. And the same thing I told many of my leaders is that in order for that to happen, you need to have team members that are doing what you are doing. So, in other words, if after one year, three years, five years, or ten years in your network marketing business, and you turn around and there is still nobody that is working, as in bringing in the sales, becoming independent, doing the business, you have really, really not done the network marketing effectively. It could be you are not a team player. So I share with you my experience. Those days, in the early days, I've always liked to micromanage. I want to do everything myself. I want to do the best demo. So I will tell all my leaders, don't do, don't. Uh, I will tell all my leaders, don't do the demo. Let me do it. Why? Gary Gunn is the best. I know when I do the demo, I will close all the sale. But I was wrong because you know why? When I leave the country, zero sales because none of them can do it. And because all of them always think, oh, I need Gary Gunn to do it. Without Gary Gunn, we cannot close the sale. Die lah. When, when people think like this, ah, it's game over already. So you know what happened after that? From then onwards, when I start to see all the failure in my life that is not working, I realized that, and then I spoke, I got advice from mentors, from gurus, I read books. Then I started, then I realized, 
oh, the lesser I do the work, the better my business will be. But of course, of course, you must make sure a few things happen. You must have a team in the beginning. You must have a few interested people with you. And number two, you must do a lot of training. So your role, actually, the, your main role when you're building a global business, it should be more of a trainer, a teacher, a coach, a mentor, a guide. You are not supposed to be a player. You know, a lot of people, when they go to the different country, they still want to be a player. No, don't do that. You are killing your own business. You are killing your own team. Don't do that. Your role when you go there is to be a coach, a mentor, a guide. Let the people be the player. So after that, when I change all this, wow, I tell you, my, my life becomes a dream life. You know, every time I go to any country, I go to Philippines, let's say, I go to Cambodia, I go to Thailand, I don't need to do anything. Everything is arranged. The guys that are supposed to do the demo will do the demo. Those that need to do the plan, do the plan. They need to set up the hall. They set up the hall, the, the reception. Everything is done. You know what I do? I fly in there. My time is one hour. I get on the stage when my time comes. I do a quick, I do the best thing that I need to do, which is inspiring, motivation. Finish, I'm done. So I do the things that I'm most effective in doing. Now, again, I want to say, not everybody is gifted to be like, maybe like me to be talking. So if you are good in one area of what you are good, you just do that. Let the expert do their role. Don't try to be an expert in everything. We, we cannot be a one-man show. Never. If you are a one-man show, you cannot conquer the market. I'm telling you this. So you want to leverage. The key word is leverage. Leverage and succeed. Okay? More things are done and it's easier. You know, those days when I try to do everything myself, I always dread. Okay? I always dread. I always have this fear of organizing an event. You know why? Because whenever I want to think of an event, oh, you know, everything is going to be on me. I feel so depressed, you know. But when I start to delegate, when I start to be a team player, when, okay, they do this, this one do this, that one do this, I only do my 10% part, which is what I'm great at, which is motivation and inspiring people. So when I come to that point, I realize that, hey, I can do as many events as I want because it's very easy already. Okay? And I can keep doing it because it, it becomes easier, it becomes more faster. Okay? So it's very, very important. Be a team player. All right? And, and remember, when you have a team and everybody, you see, the last thing you want is to do everything and then all your team members don't have a chance to participate and don't have the chance to experience and to be successful. That is the worst thing that you have ever done for your team. But when you start to be a team player and let them do, let them do. Now, remember guys, a lot of people always tell me this objection. And they say, Gary, you know why? I don't want them to do it. Because if they do it, they won't do a better job than me. And because they won't do a better job than me, we are going to lose some sales. We are going to lose some potential sales. Now, listen carefully. Really, really carefully. I'd rather lose some sales in the beginning, let my people make some mistakes in the beginning, but end up all of my people become super, super performer, rather than I save that few sales in the beginning and all my people are non-independent. And then I cannot build a thriving, passive business in the future. Remember that. It is very, very important. It's okay to lose some sales. The last thing you want is to, is to not let your people do the work and then they still continue to rely on you. That is the last thing you want. Now, I, I know, I mean, I got some people here on this group, okay, like Jeffrey knows me, uh, Romy knows me, uh, Kong knows me. You know what? How often do you see me actually doing all these things today? You don't. You, you don't believe you ask Jeffrey. How often? How often he see me install one machine? Or, or even do a demo? Or, or even fix a machine? No! Do you think I don't know how to do it? I know. 
But you must remember your role when you want to build a global business, your role has to be changed. Okay? You are selling a franchise. You are not selling a machine. But nothing wrong in selling a machine, guys. Remember, nothing wrong. But if you, if you are selling a machine and you want to sell it in a global market, wow, there's a lot of machines you have to sell. And you have, if you are doing it alone and if you are going to fly in and fly out like that, are you able to sustain that type of activity? That you must ask yourself. Okay? So remember, always, always be a team player. Okay? So I would like to recap the whole thing. Okay? Uh, once again, number one, power tip number one, think long term as you need to build a very sustainable, strong and powerful team. It has to be long term, minimum three years and above. Okay? Number two, make sure you sell your vision because it is only the vision that will drive your team. And remember, you are not here to sell a machine. If you are just doing a demo and showing a plan, you can sell a machine. But how are you going to ensure your people get the, the super charge up to be excited and continue even with rejections coming to them? You need to sell them the vision. Number three, make sure your role in building and opening the new market in a new world market, you need to be a trainer, influencer and leader rather than becoming a demo, a, a water specialist, a, a deep cleaner. You don't want that. Make your, let your people do all that. Be the leader. Be the one that people respect and train. Okay? And, and number four, lead with the system. Remember, system will always be there even without you. But if you are leading with yourself as the person that is running the business, then without you, your business is not there. But with the system, without you, the business continues to grow. So you focus on imparting knowledge on the system, not doing the business. So you don't want to do the business. You want to lead them with the system. You want to show them the system. You want them to build with the system, not you. So as long as you are not there, you will still have business coming in and money coming in. And number five, be a team player. Okay, it's very, very important because... As a team player, then you can actually conquer the world. You have more resources and then you are not so taxing. You are not so burdened. You can just do the part that you are most uh, specialized in, you are most uh, gifted at and then the rest let your team do. You give them the chance to be independent and they will then give themselves a chance to perform and then the business continue even without you. Alright guys? So, the last thing that I want to say uh, uh, as I mentioned on today's session is I'm not here to entertain, okay? Although I may sound very entertaining, <laughs> okay? But I'm not here to entertain. I really, really encourage all of you all to take action, okay? Now, this, the, the few things that I mentioned are not very difficult, okay? Those are not like rocket scientist things, okay? Those are very simple to do, easy to follow. Wow, it's 10 o'clock. I thought I still got half an hour to do Q&A. Okay, anyway, uh, see you at the top. Okay, so that ends my presentation for the day. Um, okay, Jeffrey, are there any, um, any questions so far? Maybe There's I There's only one question from Denisa. How do you convince them to buy it if it's so expensive for them? Uh, who asked that question? Uh, Denisa Dimit Dimitrova. Okay. Now, uh, Demisa, uh, I hope I mentioned your name correctly. The convincing part, as I mentioned so many times in my talk, is, is not really for you to convince. Okay? Now, Mercedes is expensive, right? There are people who will buy Mercedes. There are people who won't buy. So, the right people will buy. The wrong people won't buy. So, your product... If you ask me, is Kangen machine expensive? My answer is no. It is expensive because you probably think it's expensive. It's probably it's expensive if people think it's expensive. So whenever I, and, and this is what I like to tell people, when somebody says that the, the machine is expensive, I always like to ask them a question before I do any answer. I will always like to ask them this question. When you say it's expensive, you surely must be comparing the Kangen water, the Kangen machine with something. What are you comparing? Are you let them talk? So they probably will tell you, oh no, you know, la, the, the water filter, you know, 
the water filter is only this price or, or the, the, you know, the bottle water is only this. So they are comparing an apple with a, a, a banana. I mean, how, how, then how can you say the apple is more expensive than the banana? It's two different things, you know? So don't try to convince. Try to make the thing clear. Try to uh, create clarity to your people. You don't need to convince. But of course, after you said everything and yet they don't buy, it's okay. They are not the right one. They are not the right people. And remember, your role is not to sell the machine anyway. I already told you, right? So if the guy don't buy from you, don't buy lah. But if the guy can see the business and he knows the opportunity, that is the person you need to sell your vision. You don't need to convince already. You need to sell your vision. Okay? So I hope I answered uh, uh, what, Dimitra? Dimitra, your, your question? Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, any other question, Jeffrey? Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Gary, at, at what stage you have started training people? Like at what rank to be precise? Training? Uh, at Is what it... stage you have started training people? Like at what rank to be precise? Means what rank you started to train? Uh, okay. Who, who asked that question, Jeffrey? Uh, Dr. Do Dovert. Okay. Doctor, uh, if you are asking me about my global business, I started when I became a 6A one year after I do the business. But if you ask me about training as per se, as in the training that I was talking, like, like train how to do the demo, train on leadership, train on the marketing plan, I did it the moment I started my business. Why? Because even when I start my business, I am not selling the machine. Guys, I want you all to listen here very carefully. If your focus is still on trying to sell people a water machine or whatever product that you represent in your network marketing company, you are in the wrong business and you are playing the wrong game. I'm telling you this. Your entire focus needs to be focused on looking for business partner. If while you are looking for business, off and on you have one or two people coming to you wanting just to buy the machine as a user, it's okay. But your entire mindset and focus need to be going out there to look for people wanting to do your business. That is the game of network marketing. And I've been mentioning this over and over and over and over again. So I hope you all understand that. Okay? So the training process starts from day one because you want to be recruiting. You want to be recruiting people to do your business. You are selling a McDonald's franchise. So if you are selling a McDonald's franchise, doesn't it make sense when somebody immediately buys your franchise, you need to do the training? That's what I'm trying to say. All right, Jeffrey? 